us to another episode on ASOG 12 exams. So in this episode, we are looking at the 2019 science paper 2, which is basically a chemistry. So in this episode, we are starting with a section A, which carries 20 marks out of 85. Let us move straight to question E1. Which of the following is an example of the application of chemistry in a home? We have A, the use of amplifiers in a radio. Not true. This has to do with a physics. The use of cosmetics. Uh, basically, this is true. Remember the lotions and the perfumes. Then um, C, production of ammonia in the upper process. Uh, this is at the industrial level. Then A, uh, D, industrial production of alcohol, all these are industrial uh, level. So, D and C are not correct. So, B is the correct answer. So, related to this, we also need to know the application of chemistry in agriculture. You notice that our plants will need uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So, uh, if fertilizer production combine these elements to ensure that the, the, the plants receive the required uh, uh, elements. Then also you need to know uh, the application of chemistry in the extraction of metals in the mining sector. Then also uh, you also need to know the application of chemistry in the production of drugs from plants uh, in hospitals. All those are key things that you need to know about it, the importance of chemistry. We look at question 2. The best apparatus that is used to accurately measure a required fixed volume of reagent during titration is so basically uh, the key here is a uh, accurately measure required fixed volume so we need to know identify these apparatus then we'll be able to know uh, which one is can be collect so if you start with uh, the first one so this one is basically a beaker okay then and uh, number two this is basically a pipette then this one is uh, basically uh, this is a measuring cylinder then we have lastly this is a bullet so what you notice you need to know uh, the use of each one of these so basically if you look at the, uh, the, the, the first one the beaker the beaker is used to hold mix and uh, store uh, basically liquid so that's uh, basically the main uh, use of this one. So um, basically, uh, liquid is uh, measured according to graduated max. So if you see these are max, they are already graduated. Then if you look at number two, which is basically a pipette, a pipette is basically used to transfer uh, a measured volume of liquid. And these measured volume are basically in standard units so this normally is 10 centimeter cubic and 25 centimeter cubic which is a fixed volume you notice that basically uh, this one will do a uh, basically uh, be the best option but to also look at you can look at a uh, basically uh, the measuring cylinder so the measuring cylinder is basically used to measure uh, the volume of liquid and uh, basically measures the volume to a uh, one centimeter accuracy so basically these are not fixed volume but uh, these are tailored which is C. You look at uh, basically the bullet. So the bullet is basically used to measure the volume of liquid and basically it measures the volume to uh, uh, the degree of accuracy of uh, 0 0.1 centimeter cubic. So if you hear any measurement that has got to do with points, decimal places basically uh, the bullet is the best uh, apparatus that you use so basically that's how you answer question two let us look at question three the best method to separate a mixture of sand and diesel is so basically the question is asking us to find the best method we know that sand is insoluble in diesel while well, diesel is liquid so we have basically a liquid and the insoluble particles. So what is the best method? 
we look at uh, basically decantation so decantation is used to uh, separate insoluble suspension that uh, settles to form sediment like here are uh, water and paraffin paraffin settles on top then water uh, down there so basically that's uh, when you use decantation so dis distortion so distortion uh, basically you use it um, to uh, basically uh, separate uh, basically our uh, solutions with the uh, dividing evaporating points but in this case we have uh, sand and uh, diesel so in this case we um, we can't use distortion we look at C evaporation so we don't need to evaporate a uh, uh, diesel for us to get uh, basically a uh, sand or separate the two if you look at filtration so filtration uh, basically would be uh, the best method because uh, we, we separate insoluble solid from liquid so liquid in this case is diesel then sand is uh, insoluble so you can just filter these then we are going to get the two uh, mixture so d is the best answer we look at question uh, four identify an inert gas from the diagram below so basically if you look at the, the, this diagram what you notice here is uh, basically we need to know uh, the properties of inert gas so key is uh, all inert gases consist of uh, a single atom so single atom or single atom so in this case we notice that a as it two atom so it can't be this could be maybe like oxygen so uh, these are uh, basically these are uh, separate so these these are uh, these are two different atoms so it can't be the case you see C we have single atoms because these are the same they remain the same and here we have a bond this could be between a metal and a uh, uh, basically a non metal this could be metals so a uh, C is the best answer in this case so remember the key property all inert gases consist of single atoms as they exist okay and so they are monotonic gases with basically low melting and boiling point know that and because of that these are all stable okay they are all stable uh, uh, atoms and they rarely combine with other atoms so that's why they are called the inert gases let us look at question 5 the following equation is incomplete so we have a lithium hydroxide a react with sulfuric acid then we have the output x what is x so what we need to do is basically we need to complete uh, this equation so what we know is uh, basically lithium hydroxide is basically uh, a weak alkali but at the same time uh, it is a strong base then we have sulfuric acid so we are reacting a base with uh, basically uh, acid then we need to end up with a salt plus water this is basically known as a neutralization in uh, chemistry so you just need to know that so uh, basically this one is much more simple and straightforward so what we need to know is uh, basically the bond here the bond between uh, lithium and hydroxide you see uh, basically uh, this so like this one then the bond here in sulfuric acid we have uh, basically positive uh, one hydrogen then we have uh, this the sulfuric part which is negative two that's why uh, these are basically two hydrogen so now what happen is basically this one and this one they form water then this one and this one they form uh, a salt so this one they form a salt so th that salt will be a uh, basically lithium two because of this then like that so we need to look for lithium 2 then which is a uh, lithium sulfate so basically what you notice here c and d are out then we need to choose between a and b a and b so a and b what will be the answer depends on when we balance the equation 
So when you balance this uh, chemical equation, what you notice here is what you need to find out is uh, basically what is happening. So here we have two lithium. Then this side we should, we should also have two lithium, which is correct. Then we have uh, two oxygen plus a uh, four. There should be six oxygens in total. So if you see here, we have uh, basically four, then two, which is six. But here we have five oxygen. So uh, B is incorrect. So we go with uh, A. So and this should balance with uh, also hydrogen. So we have two plus two, which is four. This is the case, which is four. Then um, sulfur we have one. Even here we have one. So uh, that's how A is the correct answer. We look at question six. Which of the following molecules has a triple bond? So we are looking for the triple bond. So triple bond are normally will occur in uh, basically when you're dealing with nani metal. So these nani metals with uh, five electrons in the, uh, their outer space. So if you look at this one, you notice that uh, nitrogen is 14 then a uh, seven proton number then mass number is 14 then proton number seven so if you do the electronic uh electron configuration it will be basically a two uh five so we have seven so in the outer it has five then three are missing for it to have eight which is the complete so what will happen is these three need to have triple bond for it to uh, form a complete uh bonding so it will be like this two then you have outside then also another one with a uh, basically two inside then those five you are going to have uh, basically two here then two here then two here then the remaining uh, basically will be shared so these three then we have also this side let me use a different color so that you see the difference these will form a uh, the triple bond so in this case we notice that a uh, nitrogen is the best answer let us look at question seven the equation below shows the preparation of a salt so we have silver nitrate aqua solution reacting with a sodium chloride which is also aqua solution then we are ending up with a silver chloride which is a solid plus a sodium nitrate which is aqueous which of the following gives the correct description of the equation so basically it's just describing the equation that will be given so what we know is uh, basically from the uh, output side this is uh, basically a uh, solid then this is uh, aqueous which is a solution so let us look at option A. Uh, silver chloride, is it insoluble? Yes, it is insoluble because it is a solid. Then uh, sodium nitrate aqueous, it is soluble. Okay, that's the case. So this one is soluble, so D is out. Uh, so silver chloride is uh, insoluble, so it's out. So remain with A and B. Then we look at the method of separation. How do you separate insoluble from uh, uh, aquasi solution? So, A, silver chloride, which is insoluble, you can separate it using filtration. This is a uh, collect. So basically, A would be the best answer. When we look at uh, Sodium nitrate you see uh, aquas we can we don't need to use decantation because uh, silver chloride and the uh, sodium aquas they are totally not uh, all liquids one is solid one is a liquid so this is not uh, cannot be used it's not the best method in short let us look at question eight what mass of copper oxide would react completely with 500 centimeter cubic of a molarity of 0 0.5 dilute sulfuric acid? So basically what we need to do is first of all we need to do an equation to understand what is happening. So because we need to find the, the mole ratio. 
so um copper oxide this is copper to oxide which is a solid then we react it basically with um sulfuric acid and this is a basically aqueous which is a solution then we end up with him uh, basically what is going to happen is uh we are going to end up with a uh, copper sulfate which is aqueous then plus a uh, water that is uh, what is uh, going to happen so now having uh, this we need to see that the equation is balanced so we have uh, basically one copper one copper collect then uh oxygen we have uh, five this side then we have four plus one which is five then hydrogen we have a uh, two two collect then a uh, sulfur one one so it's already balanced so these are being used in the ratio one to one to produce one more to produce one more that's uh, the way they are being used so now what we need to, to find out is uh, how many moles are in sulfuric acid so that uh, once we know the number of moles in this dilute sulfuric acid, we can put it here. Then we determine how many moles can be produced of uh, can be used of um, copper oxide. So basically, we've been given molarity, then we've been given the volume. So the number of moles, we know that molarity is given by the number of moles divided by volume. The volume should be in a uh, decimeter cubic, which is liters. And they are 1000 centimeter cubic in 1 liter or decimeter cubic so what we do is we divide 500 by 1000 to convert it uh, to liters which will be 0 0.5 so having find that we can find now we know what molar it is you see basically this which is 0 0.5 equals the number of moles that we are looking for we shall call it x divided by volume which is this one so this one is equivalent to this in liters which is 0 0.5 to find x we just cross multiply so x is equal to uh, 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 we end up with uh, basically 0 0.25 so 0 0.25 are the number of moles uh, in sulfuric acid so here what we have is 0 0.25 moles if that's the case because it's one to one then here we are using also 0.25 moles this is what we are using so now if you are using these uh, moles what is the mass contained in these moles so we know that uh, to find uh, basically the the mass to mass find the mass here the mass of uh, basically this copper oxide will be equal to basically the number of moles multiplied by uh, uh, relative mass of this compound so what we do is we need to find the relative mass of uh, copper oxide so we can go to the periodic table we know that uh, this copper oxide is written as that so what we have we have uh, basically one element of copper so we need to go and look for copper on the periodic table so this so what is the mass number is 64 so we have 64 then plus then oxygen we have basically 16 here we add then we end up with a uh, basically we add this we end up with 80 so 80 is a relative molecular mass of copper then this is what we multiply with uh, the number of moles so we come here the number of moles here is 0 0.25 so 0 0.25 multiplied by 80 we end up with uh, basically 20 grams remember this is 80 grams because the um, mass number is measured in grams so we go to the options we discover that a d is the correct answer so basically this is how you answer this question let us look at question nine the table below shows some transition elements and their uses which one is the correct use in the contact and other process so in this case basically we have at uh, the two uh the contact and the other process so the first thing that we need we need to know what is a contact process and what is uh the other process 
So the contact process is basically a modern industrial method of producing sulfuric acid. Okay? And this sulfuric acid is very important because it is used in the manufacture of fertilizer and uh, uh, pigment dyes and the drugs. Then, on the other hand, when we talk about other processes, basically also an industrial process are used to obtain uh, ammonia from hydrogen and the oxygen. Now, uh, ammonia is very important in the uh, process of uh, producing fertilizer, which is very key to agriculture sector. So now, what we need to establish is uh, what are the catalysts in these, which elements are used in uh, among the transition elements in the periodic table. So, if you understand what the contact uh, process is and what other processes should be very easy to deal with. So basically, uh, we know that uh, in the uh, contact uh, process, we don't we use uh, vanadium. So what you discover is A and D, C uh, out. So it's between B and D. Then uh, in the other process, uh, we use uh, iron as the catalyst. This uh, makes B to be uh, the correct answer. We look at question 10. Which of the arrangements below is suitable for collecting soluble gas that is denser than air? So soluble gas which is denser than air. So you see soluble in water or in the liquid. So what you discover, let us look at the option. One, this air is denser than E. Uh, this gas is denser than air. So uh, A cannot work out because uh, it will fall down instead of uh, coming here. So A is out. We look at B. So uh, this gas is soluble in water. So basically it will dissolve in water. So basically um, it will not work. And also here it will not go up because it's denser than air. So this gas B cannot work. We look at C. C uh, basically... Uh, this gas that will come out here is denser than here, so it will fall down here and it can be kept here because it will not uh, rise because it's denser than uh, air, so C would be a uh, collect here. Then um, D, because it's uh, basically a uh, soluble in water and it's denser than air, D cannot work. So uh, this is how you answer question C. Remember what is key is soluble and denser than air. That's where the key is. Let us look at question 11. The relative formula mass for calcium hydrogen carbonate uh, this one is so basically uh, what is the question asking us to do is to find the relative formula mass. So what we need to do is basically Go to the periodic table and add the mass number of the elements or atoms that are making up this compound. So uh, let us move to uh, basically the periodic table so that we demonstrate. So basically uh, the formula is uh, calcium, then we have hydrogen, uh, then, then... So what we need to do is to come look for the first uh, element is calcium so we come to calcium here what is the mass number is a 40 so it will be 40 then plus next is hydrogen and there are two hydrogen here so because of these two so it will be two multiplied by what's the mass number of hydrogen you see a one then plus then we come to next which is a uh, carbon so we go on the check for carbon carbon is 12 so how many carbons are here? There are two because of these two. So it will be two multiplied by 12. Then plus, we do uh, the same for oxygen. So there are three multiplied by two, six. So it will be six multiplied by, what's the uh, mass number of oxygen? is 16. Then we can use our calculator and basically uh, add this. So once we add, we discover this is a 14. Then this is a two plus a two. Then plus 24. Then uh, you multiply um, 16 by um, 6. So we have uh, 6. Then we have 96. 
So when we add this, we are going to discover that we are going to end up with 162 using a calculator. So it will be 162. So 162 is basically the answer. So you discover that D is uh, the answer in this case. Let us look at question 12. Which of the following statements explain why magnesium, calcium, and barium are placed in group 2 of the periodic table? So basically, let us look at uh, basically the option. They all have two electrons in the outermost shell. Uh, so basically, you know that if you come and look at these elements, okay, these elements, you check on the periodic table, you are going to have this barium, magnesium, calcium. These are elements, they are in the same group. Why are they in the same group? So basically, they all have uh, two electrons in the outermost shell. This is uh, basically the correct answer even without looking at the other option. So these are basically, they are very reactive, but they are less than uh, the alkalis. So the alkalis are basically group 1 uh, elements. So, and basically one thing that you also need to know is that uh, their reactivity increases as you move down the group. Okay, so basically they react with also cold water, but uh, they are also less reactive or less reactive, less vigorous as compared to the alkalis, which belongs to a uh, group one uh, element. So uh, we go to question 13. How many molecules are found in? Uh, we have uh, six liters or six decimeters of carbon dioxide at room temperature. So we want to find the number of moles. That's what the question is asking us. So basically, to find the number of moles, we use the formula N, the number of moles, is equal to a basically volume given divided by a 24 uh, liters or, de or, or, or decimeter per mole. And this is a basically the number of moles that are in uh, N given gas at room temperature. If you forget that, you can always find this uh, on the periodic table. You will notice that uh, this is uh, given as here on the below the, the periodic table. This is uh, basically that one, what we are using. So you can go back and substitute. So this volume should always be in decimeter or liters, which is decimeter, which is the same as liters. So it will be a uh, 6 divided by 24. So when we use our calculator, we discover that this is just a 1 over 4, which is the same as 0 0.25. Uh, now this 2, 5 is basically uh, the moles. Now this is asking us how many molecules. Okay, how many molecules. So for us to find uh, basically the number of molecules, again, we go to the uh, periodic table. So the number of moles... Or molecules, not moles, molecules, is given by the number of moles, which is now in this case moles, not molecules, multiplied by, so you multiply by a uh, 6.02, multiply by 10 to the power 23. So basically when you look at uh, the periodic table, you see this number. So whether it's a number of atoms or this is a standard, so this is the number of molecules Pay given more. So it's this number that you multiply. So you are going to substitute here, it will be a 0 0.25, then we multiply by 6. Uh, 0. So as you see here, is just 6.0, then you multiply by 10 to the power 23. So once you multiply that, you discover that you are going to end up with a uh, basically discover that you are going to end up with 
uh, basically this is almost a 6 divided by 4 which is a basically 1.5 multiplied by uh, 10 to the power 23 so 10 to the power 23 that what will be uh, basically the answer so if you check on the option you discover that uh, option A is the best answer let us look at question 14 which of the following is an alloy so we have basically a rust b silver c bronze d tungsten so we know that a is basically not um, an alloy because we know that an alloy is a mixture of two or more elements that are usually metals except for the case when you're dealing with steel where we use a carbon so basically we need to also know that remember an alloy is not a compound but a mixture so b is also not because b is an element so we know that c is the correct answer among the option because a bronze is um, a mixture of copper and tin then uh related to this we also need to know other examples uh, like for example you know that a uh, milled steel is made of uh, iron and carbon then I also have stainless steel, which is made of iron, uh, chromium, and nickel. Then I also have brass, which is a mixture of copper and zinc. Then uh, among the least known, we have also a, a, a soda, which is a basically a mixture of lead and tin. So you need uh, to know uh, these. We move to question uh, 15. So, if you look at question 15, it leads, Arrogens are useful elements, but also cause harm to the environment. Which of the following is a true danger of allergens? So, we are looking for uh, basically the danger. They A, cause HIV and AIDS in human beings. This is uh, not true. So, A is out. Uh, B deplete the ozone layer. So uh, this one is basically true. You notice that uh, basically chlorine in the um, atmosphere can destroy a uh, ozone layer. So this is uh, basically chlorine. So uh, you notice this is true. If you look at C, C uh, used to treat one. This is uh, basically not uh, a danger. So and D or release arm for radiation in the environment it's not true these um so uh that's the case so the other thing that you also need to know you also need to know that uh uh bromine liquid can also be corrosive as uh, one of the allergens so that's uh basically one of uh, the the effects of these uh, on the uh, on the environment and uh, human beings also chlorine itself can cause blindness and can also damage the lungs uh, even cause death uh, you notice that uh, it was chlorine, one of the, these allergens that was used in the uh, World War One. So uh, basically, these are a few things that you need to know about uh, allergens. We move to question 16. The best way of uh, preventing spanners, priors, screwdrivers from lasting is... So we have a sac sacrificial protection, a tarring, uh, oiling and uh, galvanizing so basically what you need to know is uh, you notice that uh, basically A and D they are related in the sense that D is a subset of a sacrificial uh, protection so a D cannot be a uh, because this is a, 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 a subset of A remember we are looking for the best way then uh, if you look at C oiling these cannot be slippery. If they are slippery, you can't use them. So a C cannot be uh, collect because uh, they will be too slippery. So remain with uh, A and B. So if you look at a B, B is uh, basically would be uh, the best uh, subset of uh, A in the sense that uh, A is uh, more uh, encompassing. A is more encompassing. So what you do is you notice that a uh, sacrificial protection will uh, involve a uh, coating iron with another metal. Basically, uh, also you discover that um, 
in the in the case when we are quoting this uh, the metal that you are quoting should be uh, more reactive than iron so that uh, it's able to protect uh, iron and also a uh, galvanizing so ga galvanize iron with uh, basically steel to prevent uh, um, rusting so uh, a would be the best uh, answer here we look at question 17 the gas that combines with uh, hemoglobin and reduces its capacity to carry oxygen in the body is so we have nitrogen dioxide nitrogen monoxide carbon mo dioxide then carbon monoxide so uh, this one is basically a carbon monoxide and because we know that a carbon monoxide causes suffocation so ideally a uh, hemoglobin in our blood uh, tend to react more easily with a uh, carbon monoxide than it does with carbon dioxide so that's uh, ends uh, the case look at question 18 which of the following substance is not a synthetic uh, fiber so i uh, will notice that uh, basically we have two types of uh, basically uh, polymers and these polymers are either basically synthetic polymers or uh, natural polymers so what you notice is that uh, synthetic polymers are mostly uh, these are plastics the natural polymers are these that uh, exist in nature so a uh, synthetic are uh, also known as a man made so these are made by um, man then uh, natural polymers are these that just exist naturally they are made by god so what you notice as some examples of uh, synthetic polymers are uh, basically we have also um, condensation polymers where we have uh, terraline and the nylon then we also have a polymer pvc these are used uh, as plastics for these are basically addition polymers then uh, examples of condensation polymers that are natural we have uh, uh, proteins fats cotton these are examples of uh, natural polymers so what you notice here the question is asking us among these which one is it not a synthetic so which one is not man made so basically you see a b is uh, the best answer let us look at question 19 the compound represented below is so basically uh, we need to identify this compound so we have a ethene b ethane c ethan d ethan so if you look at the compound you notice that this compound is um, an hydrocarbon compound which is a compound that is uh, contains only carbon and the hydrogen and uh, these compounds are only belong to two groups uh, which is uh, base garden alkanes and alkenes so what this tells us d is not correct uh, basically to confirm uh, we need to uh, check these two so what we do is basically we know that there are two carbons one two then uh, they are four hydrogen so if you look at um, the formula for this one is the general formula is a C N 2 H plus 2 then this one is C N then H 2 N so what you notice here is if N is equal to 2 uh, this one becomes C 2 h4 so this one uh, basically is the same as that one now because there are two carbons it means uh, this should start with eth so because it's alkene it becomes ethene so uh, basically e or ethene or ethene is uh, basically the answer which is m we move to our uh, question 20 what is the name of the compound below so uh we have options a through d so what we do is basically we notice that uh, basically this is uh, a, a sort that is made from uh, a stratification so uh if we were to let this one what you notice here is uh, this one is coming from nothing but uh c h uh three basically uh c o which is a uh, ethanoic acid then you add react it with uh, basically an alcohol which is uh, also a uh, 
uh, ethan so what will happen is basically uh, you need to have uh, basically water and another compound so what will happen is uh, basically uh, the acid is going to lose this then this one is going to lose that so that uh, these two they are going to form water so they are going to form water here among the results then plus so these will combine to form this compound then this one and this one comes here so such that you have a basically a c 2 h 5 c is 2 5 so this uh, will be our compound now this compound what will happen is if you start from here this as up to here it has a basically uh supposed to be a uh, basically two carbons for hydrogen so it's supposed to be an ethane but because it's less by one hydrogen so it becomes uh, an ethyl like this then uh, this one uh, is uh, basically uh, normal uh, e with that it becomes uh, a salt so it becomes a uh, ethanol because of this so when you combine ethyl and ethanol you end up with uh, basically uh, ethyl ethanol which is uh, in this case uh, basically uh, C so C is uh, the best answer. So you notice from here that uh, basically this one is the ethyl. Then uh, we have this one, which is uh, the uh, yeah, ethanol part. So from uh, the ethan, then uh, you add this to get uh, this uh, compound. So basically, this is how you answer section A to get the optimal max. So please check out for uh, the second episode uh, on uh, focusing on this paper which uh, basically focuses on section B questions. Then also check out for the third episode that looks at the section C on it. So thank you for uh, watching this episode.